completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 6, modifying the eccentric sheave to take a much larger grub screw and silver soldering the inlet exhaust manifold. To make the modification to the eccentric sheave I need to remove the valve gear and thanks to the magic of video it's gone. This is the die block and I don't want to lose this so I'm putting it in a box with all the other bits in slow motion just for a change. Here's the complete valve gear from the high pressure cylinder. I need to separate both of the eccentric straps so I can get at the double sheave. Eccentric sheaves on miniature steam engines are not normally like this, machined as a pair. I've never ever made a pair of eccentric sheaves in one piece like this and when I think about how to do it, it makes my brain hurt a bit. It looks to me like it could be very fiddly. I normally make them individually adjustable, which to be fair, I think is a better way of doing it. These have a built-in 30 degree offset. The man who built this engine was definitely a good engineer because all of the parts are made very well indeed. As I dismantle the parts, I'm marking them with a centre punch. Once again, this is in slow motion and so is the sound. On this pair of eccentric straps, I've put two centre pop marks to tell me which way round they fit. On the other pair, I put a single centre pop mark. On both of them though, I did this on the inside so you can't see them when they're fitted back to the engine. Some people stamp numbers on the parts and make them very visible, but I don't like that, it makes it look like a painting by numbers set. Now I have the twin eccentric sheaves in one unit in my hand. On the outer sheave, I need to drill from the outside edge towards the centre and then thread the hole for a 4BA grub screw. But before I start this, I have to mark the centre and as usual, I've done this by eye. If you're doing the job yourself, you may need to measure it a bit better than I did. Either way, you're going to end up with a mark on the outside edge of the sheave and this is where I'm going to drill the hole. Before I do that though, I need to remove some of the middle part using a file. This is a square needle file, but it seemed to be quite difficult. So what I ended up doing was using the bandsaw, three plunge cuts, and then I used the file to flatten off the points. Here's the grub screw that I'm about to fit, and as you can clearly see, it's far bigger than the small one that was originally used. This next part of the job is very important. Starting with a centre drill, I drill a hole very carefully exactly in the middle and I follow this with a twist drill which is tapping size for 4BA. And here's the important bit, before I take the part out of the machine vise I start to tap the hole, very slowly and very carefully using a first tap, the one with the long taper on it. Once I go part way into the work I slacken off the machine vise and then remove the entire part including the tap because I prefer to thread the rest by hand on the bench. Threading by hand with the tap held in a large chuck in a drilling machine is not a very sensitive way to do it and it's an easy way to snap the tap off. By starting it off in the drilling machine though it does ensure that the tap is perfectly in line with the hole. The 4BA grub screw is a bit too long but that was a simple job I just took it out and shortened it. The grub screw definitely needs to be below the surface of the hole. In this clip I'm using a needle file to remove any sharp edges from around the hole. Then I drilled a hole in the eccentric strap as you can see here. And to deburr that on the inside I used a flapper wheel in my Proxon motor tool. Cleaned out the groove in the eccentric strap using the edge of a needle file. I also need to clean up the hole on the outside but I won't bother for now. Reassembly is the opposite of disassembly and here I'm refitting the eccentric straps to the respective sheaves. And this is very easy to get right because the centre pops make it impossible to go wrong. This job didn't take very long and it was plain sailing really. All I need to do now is reassemble the valve gear, starting with the die block in the expansion link. And once that was fitted, I thoroughly oiled all the parts around the expansion link. I don't think I really like this part of a miniature steam engine build or rebuild. The oil is very necessary, but it goes everywhere. On the day that I filmed this I was quite glad to get back into the house and give my hands a thorough clean to get rid of the oil. Now it's time to reset the timing and by being able to insert the allen key through the eccentric strap makes it very easy indeed. Not to mention a lot quicker as I don't have to remove the eccentric strap.
Once again I'm pumping oil through the exhaust port into the low pressure cylinder because until I put the piping in place the other two cylinders are not getting any oil via the airline. There's a slight air leak around the high pressure cylinder steam chest but to be fair the bolts securing the steam chest are currently not very tight. As you can see the engine runs very well in both directions. Now it's time to look at the piping. What I don't understand is this piece of pipe has never been silver soldered. There's no time like the present, so here we go. I'm going to silver solder it. First of all though, I'm cleaning it. I use this gun wash stuff which is cellulose thinners or lacquer thinner. I submerged the part for a while, then I took it out, cleaned it and did the same again. Here's the part after I silver soldered the flange in place and the good news is it fits to the block fine. Once I make sure everything fits, this part will be put into the acid bath to be thoroughly cleaned. This will remove every trace of the silver solder flux and any other oxidisation. When the engine nears completion, I will actually lag these pieces of copper pipe with some string and paint the string white. It should look good. Time to see what happens when the intermediate cylinder gets an air supply. Well it seems to run ok, can this be just pure good luck? I can see oil residue coming out of the exhaust from the intermediate cylinder. If I move the valve gear for the intermediate cylinder into the opposite position the engine shouldn't go. Health and safety warning, do not do this, it's quite dangerous putting your fingers near working machinery. I've just done it, but then again I am a qualified village idiot these days. I cleaned up the flanges of the longer piece of pipe and fitted that. Now let's see what happens. Nothing much different happens, it runs the same as before. I can't take this episode any further because during this part of the test the small grub screw stopped gripping the crankshaft. And in the next episode I'm going to dispense with these small grub screws and fit a proper 4BA one exactly the same way as you've seen me fit for the high pressure cylinders valve gear. As you can see here the crankshaft is just spinning round inside the eccentric sheave. And that's about it for this episode. My hands are so oily now I can't even pick up spanners. The last thing to do today is to give the engine a good wipe down with a couple of cloths, starting with a very oily one and working my way up to a clean one. Stay well, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.